Hi everybody and good morning. It is, uh, what day is it today? It's Tuesday, February 8th and we're here for my uh, Tuesday, Thursday abnormal psychology class. But good morning. It is week number five. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about today. But I see um, a bunch of you joining me, getting your names uh, in the chat, which is fantastic. Uh, can you all hear me and see me okay? Someone let me know if everything is coming in uh, clearly on on your end and then we can uh, go from from there but everything looks fine on my end over this way wait just a minute here just to make sure all right can you all hear me okay someone let me know in the chat if you can uh, hear and see me just fine otherwise i'll assume everything is good to go uh perfect thank you thank you so much for letting me know that's great okay so um, as I said, we're in week number five. Uh, we have a few things to to get to this week. Not only um, some feedback from last week, but we do have our first exam this week, which I do want to talk a little bit about. Uh, and I also want to talk about our return to in-person that is scheduled for next week. So uh, lots of things to get to. Thank you. Um, thank you all for letting me know that everything is coming through just fine. So um, let's go ahead and head over to um, Canvas together. And as I said, we'll make a, a few quick comments about last week. I want to go over some of the feedback from our discussion and the first part of the paper. And then we will jump into talking about the things that we have going on this week, along with um, our plan for next week as well. So um, let's go backward first, um, as that seems to make the most sense with all the things I want to talk about. Last week, we finally got to the disorders. So I hope you were excited and enjoyed uh, thinking a little bit more about anxiety disorders, which again are very, very, very uh, common. Lots and lots of people struggle with anxiety disorders. Um, and so a couple of things last week uh, for the discussion, for discussion number four, uh, most of you did a wonderful job describing the differences between a fear and a phobia. So for example, again, if somebody had a fear of flying, um, they might not be happy to fly, but they would still be willing to fly, right? Maybe they have to have like a drink to get them through it, or they're anxious the entire time, but they would still get on an airplane and fly, even though they might try to avoid it if it was possible. Somebody who has a phobia of flying will have like a near crippling level of fear while on a plane. They most likely will avoid getting on a plane at all costs, maybe um, as a result, not going to family events that were uh, that they couldn't uh, get to without flying or maybe um, they suffer at like great personal cost on the airplane of having to get absolutely like uh, plastered in order to manage anxiety to get through it or taking too much medication to get through it. Uh, but there tends to be a severity difference between somebody who has a fear, which is really common, and a phobia, which is often irrational uh, and uh, much more severe than just uh, being afraid. Uh, a lot of you uh, knew people or yourself had phobias. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. A lot of people, common fears, fears of snakes and spiders and heights, and then some uh, more uncommon ones, which is always really interesting uh, to read about. So I hope you enjoyed um, sharing and reading um, all of the things that many of us uh, experience. And then um, great job talking about some of the different ways that we could uh, treat these. A lot of you talked about exposure therapies like systematic desensitization or flooding. Some of you talked about more like cognitive related therapy and looking at the thoughts that you have around it. So nicely done. And then um, I really enjoyed your your superstitions, right? Like a lot of you talked about like walking under a ladder or black cats uh, and, and so on. There was a breaking a mirror. There's a whole ton of them. And some of you brought in um, really unique cultural beliefs, which I love. I love that you were uh, kind of highlighting beliefs that might not be typical for everyone, but that are, are common to your family or to you or your culture um, and background. I love that. I think that is, is really, really cool. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the chance to think a little bit about anxiety and superstitions. Again, uh, OCD, very, very directly linked to superstitious thinking. So uh, really nicely done. Most of you did fantastic. Number one reason people lost points was not um, not elaborating a little bit more, especially on number three, um, describing two different methods that could be used. Some of you just listed them, but you didn't describe them in any way. Um, I wanted you to, to give me a little bit more information. But most of you, um, as I said, did a fantastic job. Don't forget to also reply to a classmate 
this week is uh, likely the last week that we're doing like discussions in online format, at least for now. Really wild. I read this morning that like California is lifting its mask mandate next week. A lot of uh, a lot of states are lifting their mandates for for school. Not us yet, uh, but seems like uh, even though the numbers are still really really bad, we're we're moving toward things like being endemic. So trying to um, kind of move to the next stage where we just live with with COVID. But yeah, February fifteenth next week, um, they're lifting the mandate in California to wear masks in indoor locations. Uh, if you are vaccinated. So I don't think that will extend to our classes. I think you still have to wear masks um, in a, a school setting. But uh, it's weird. I never know what to make of, of all of the, the changes and rules, right? We'll, we'll lift the mask mandate and then there'll be a new variant that sends us back and we'll have to wear masks again. I'm not going to throw my masks away anytime soon, that's for sure. <laughs> I will, uh, maybe I'll burn one as like a symbolic offering and then keep the rest because <laughs> I have a feeling I will still probably need them at, at some point, right? But um, yeah, really, um, again, great job, very nicely done, um, and we'll see we'll see what happens as we as we move into into the the unknown, right into the future. Uh, the other thing that was last week was the diagnosis paper part one. Really enjoyed all of the selections that you made. A lot of really cool like movies and TV shows, um, and kind of all over the place. So I'm I'm very excited for your choices. Uh, the biggest reason, a few of your lost points is um, just not quite giving me enough. There were a couple of papers that were only a couple of sentences. They were really, really brief, or they didn't have the citation information in some um, in some way. But uh, most of you got full points for this, really nicely done. You are welcome to change your paper or uh, change your character at any point, though I definitely think that the sooner you commit to someone, um, the easier it will be for you in the long run. So try and uh, try and pick somebody and, and commit to that. And as we move forward, we'll talk about the second part of the paper uh, in a couple of weeks. So um, that's everything from last week. Let's talk about uh, about this week. This week we move on to chapter five, which has a lot to do with uh, with stress and uh, disorders related to stress and adjustment. Uh, stress is something I think we're all very familiar with, right? So um, when it comes to this week, uh, of course, read chapter five in the textbook like you always would. Um, I did post the slides for you related to chapter five. And then there's a, a lecture video like always. So the lecture video here is a Zoom link uh, since I had some outside clips in it. So make sure that you're watching it and taking notes and paying attention and all that usual stuff. Um, I also posted a video from the Health Center that they made for me, um, and I think this is a really amazing uh, little video that they made, and you will need this for our discussion this week, so uh, please make sure that you um, are watching it. I'm not sure why this isn't isn't there, but it, hopefully it's here. Let's click on this real quick just to make sure. Okay, so um, the Health Center that we have at our school and our Counseling Center uh, did kind of put together this handout, and I helped them uh, working on this a couple of years ago. Um, so they gave me some cool like mindfulness training activities, mindfulness practices and exercises. And so there's a whole list of them here, and they're, and they're things that tend to be really, really brief. Uh, but I have some mindfulness activities here, along with um, a mindfulness video that goes over like the basics of what it means to be mindful. Why is it helpful? What are some little activities and things you can do? Now, I will be really, really honest with you. When uh, I started going, like, I've gone to therapy my whole life. I think I shared that with you. Uh, but when a couple of years ago, my therapist was like, I would like to work with you on being more mindful and, like, mindfulness training. And on the inside, I felt like I rolled my eyes, right? Like, oh, mindfulness. Like, of course, you want me to be more mindful, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it took me a little bit to really like wrap my head around the importance of mindfulness and the benefits of mindfulness. And now it is something that I really try to do. I'm more mindful of being mindful, right? Like I try to take a moment to just be very present and enjoy things when they're happening or take a moment and focus on little elements of a situation. And uh, that's a lot of what mindfulness is, is just being very like present and, and practicing and being aware of your surroundings and focusing on little things that might be um, important parts of an experience. And so uh, if you have the, the response of like, ugh, mindfulness, right? You're not alone. <laughs> I was there myself as well. Um, but I do definitely appreciate uh, this a little bit more now. And I hope that this video that they made is helpful and that uh, you'll be looking at some of these activities as part of the discussion for this week. 
So make sure that in addition to watching my lecture video and uh, taking notes, that you also watch this mindfulness training video that I included here uh, as a great resource, not only in general, but also for the discussion this week. And so when it comes to discussion number five um, related to our chapter, um, you will be looking at some of those mindfulness activities, right? So I have them linked on here as well. So that's why it's so beneficial for you to watch that. But as always, you'll watch my brief um, introduction video. Make sure that you answer all of my questions. Uh, read through a minimum of five of your classmates' responses and reply to one of them. As always, this is worth 15 points. 13 for your responses to me and two for responses to a classmate. So um, your focus for this is on stress and trauma. Uh, and kind of associated things related to that. So um, I have two links for you down here. One is a stress test, which is very informal and quick. And one um, is the mindfulness activities that I just showed you on the other page. So I'd like you to complete the little stress test, which is right here. It's just answering yes or no um, and, and creating a score. Share your reactions or thoughts about it. Um, does it surprise you, not surprise you? Um, do you have any thoughts or reactions related to your score? Number three, how do you cope with your stress? In other words, what are some of the things that you do to cope with stress in your life? These can be positive or negative, healthy or unhealthy. Either one is completely fine. I won't judge you, right? It's completely fine to be honest. Uh, maybe you don't cope with your stress and that's something that you want to talk about as well. That's totally fine. And then what you will do for the second part of this is you will complete one of the mindfulness activities that is in this document. Um, you're welcome to find another one online if you would like. Um, if you do, just make sure you describe it. Uh, but you will complete these. Most of them are like three to five minute kind of activities. And then you'll answer, which one did you do? And how did it go for you? Was it diff difficult to complete? What were your reactions? How did you feel before versus after? Would you do it again? All of that kind of stuff. So uh, one of this, part of this is uh, kind of dealing with and thinking about how you uh, have, how much stress do you have in your life? How do you deal and cope with that stress? And the other part is focusing on mindfulness uh, and how um, you reacted and feel about these activities. So I hope you enjoy the chance to, uh, to think about this a little bit more. Again, uh, it has taken me a little bit to come around to the idea of mindfulness, uh, but I do see the incredible value in it now. And um, easy example, I, I can't remember if I shared with you or not, but I went up to um, Santa Cruz area over the weekend and we stayed in this beautiful little like Airbnb um, house in the middle of the Redwood Forest. And uh, I, I did my research. I picked it. I wanted so badly to be around big redwood trees. And uh, for me, I tried to have like a moment of mindfulness there because I knew that uh, one, that I could probably use it. And two, that I was going to miss those trees. So I stood outside uh, early in the morning yesterday morning when I took my dog out. And I just closed my eyes and I focused on um, the feeling of the cold air as it went into my nose, right? And the smell of the trees and the dirt and the air around me and the sounds that I could hear. And all of those little things of really being present and mindful in the moment uh, are important things to experience if you want to remember a moment or be very present in it. So um, again, if you have the thought of like, Ugh, mindfulness, <laughs> don't feel bad. Um, you know, hopefully it's something you come around to. Lots and lots of benefits of being present and mindful. The other thing that we have this week is we do have our first exam. So I want to spend some time um, talking about that. No, I didn't do any forest bathing. Right? I thought of like bathing in a bathtub in the forest, right? <laughs> Unless maybe it's something else. But no, it was more just, um, you know, trying to just be present and enjoy that moment in, in the trees, right? Uh, so exam number one, I wanna make sure that you feel as good about this as possible. You are taking this completely online, uh, which I think is, is kind of nice. I mean, our class has been online so far, so um, that's very congruent with that. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the test and the study guide and everything related to that. And then we will get to uh, the extra credit and uh, our plan for, for next week. So um, if you click on exam number one, this is where you will take the test. It's right here on Canvas. Uh, and there are some instructions here. So I wanna go over these a little bit so that you feel um, as good about it as you can. This is worth 100 points. There are 82 questions on the exam and it's due by this Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, you have 75 minutes to take it uh, and it is obviously completely online. So let's go through that just a little bit more. As I said, you have 75 minutes to complete the test. 
Now, um, I will tell you that I've given some variation of this test for the last couple of years online, and most people finish in about like 62 minutes or so. That's the, the general average that I see. So it's plenty of time as long as you are organized and prepared. And I'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we go along here. You only get one attempt at the exam, so make sure that you're ready and organized before you begin. Make sure that you have a quiet place uh, to take the test, that you have good internet connection, that you are ready, that you've prepared, you're organized, you have everything that you need in front of you. Because once you hit start, um, once we hit take the quiz, you're in it and you can no longer stop it and back out. So one attempt, 75 minutes. Uh, you can use your notes, you can use your book, you can use anything um, that you have available to you during the exam. But I promise you that if you're trying to look every single answer up, you will run out of time, okay? Or you will at least find the time to be very tight. Okay, so what I would like you to do is I would like you to study and prepare like you would for a traditional in-person test. And then you're welcome to have your notes and books and everything there with you in case you need it. But if you are trying to understand the terms on the exam, trying to look everything up, you are going to run out of time. So please make sure that you study and prepare. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the study guide in a few minutes. Canvas uh, will have a clock. When you start the quiz, there's a little cl um, clock in the left corner and it will count you down from 75 minutes. Now just be mindful, see, mindful, be aware of the clock. Uh, and you're welcome to skip questions and kind of move ahead and back through the exam. But um, if you don't know the answer to something, skip it. Right? You want to make sure that you're leaving yourself enough time as Canvas will stop you when your time runs out. Uh, make sure that you hit submit quiz when you're done. Uh, it will give you a grade on everything but the short answer questions the moment that you finish. So the short answer questions I have to go through and grade, but everything else will be graded automatically. Uh, and so that will allow you to see your score instantly the moment that you submit the quiz. I'll talk about that in, a, in one more second. Uh, let me get to the study guide in just a moment. A few other kind of general things. Most of the exam is multiple choice and true false. There are some short answer questions, but vast majority of it is multiple choice and true false. Uh, I will never, ever, ever trick you on a question. So if you read something and it seems unclear or confusing, try and read it again, right? I write all of my own questions. None of them are like from a test bank. So this should be very straightforward and clear. Um, if it seems confusing, try to read it again. Um, I will never trick you. That's just dumb. Trick questions are just stupid. Um, I want to make sure that you understand the materials. Um, I won't trick you. I want you all to do well. If you all got A's, I would be so genuinely happy. Uh, but you are going to need to prepare and be organized and ready in order to succeed. But if you've been reading, following along, listening to the lectures and doing all the materials, you should do great. These exams, I think they are very straightforward and you will be in a good spot um, as long as you're doing all of those things. So um, a couple of questions about the, the study guide here. So you're asking which chapters and so on. As you get ready to prepare for the exam, if you click on um, right above it, study guide number one, this is going to bring up the study guide for this exam. And you'll see on here, the chapters that are on the test are one, two, three, four, and five. So chapters one through five, basically the beginning of the semester through uh, what we are covering this week. So when I make the exam, I go through and I make it, and the exams are heavily based on the lectures, which is why I've said all the way um, along uh, that you are definitely going to want to be paying attention when you're watching those lecture videos. Um, and they're also based a little bit on the textbook, right? So if you don't find one of the terms that are on here in the lecture, that means it will be in the, in the study guide. Um, you're welcome, Care Bear, no problem. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more as we go here about how you can prepare with this. Um, but everything that is on the study guide, any term or concept that is on here is something that you are going to want to know for the exam. So when I make the test, I then go through and make the study guide and I write every term or concept or idea from the exam on the study guide. And so all of these terms from chapter one are things that you need to know for the test. All of these from chapter two, three, four, and five, it will be on the exam. So if it's on here, make sure that you recognize it, you understand it, you can answer questions about it. Uh, if it's not on here, you don't need to study it and you can uh, just let it go. Uh, you don't have to worry about it, it won't show up on the exam. 
So when I say study and prepare, now uh, I will share with you if I haven't already, I, I am a very like meticulous perfectionist oriented student. Uh, I got straight A's all the way through everything. And honestly, if I could go back and do it again, I would never put that pressure on myself. <laughs> I would just get a B in community college and get it out of the way um, so that I didn't feel that pressure. Uh, but I am a, a perfectionist and I, I tend to want to get 100% or more on everything. So if it were me, I would over prepare for this exam. Exams are anxiety causing, right? They cause a lot of stress and anxiety. And the first exam is the worst because if you haven't taken a class with me, you don't know what to expect. And so it's always better to over prepare. Be ready for anything that I could possibly throw at you. And so what I mean by preparing is what I would do. And again, this is me. Um, feel free to do whatever is comfortable for you. I would go through and I would write or type out every single term or concept on this list. I'd probably type it out because that's faster. Um, and then I would have it all printed out in front of me as I'm taking the exam. So I would study the terms on here. I might go through and make like a Quizlet or flashcards and I would type it out and make sure I had it all in front of me. And so then what I can guarantee is as I'm taking the test, if I like for some reason blank on uh, the five D's of abnormality, I have my study guide completed right here next to me and I can go, oh, okay, um, five D's of abnormality, here they are. And that what that means is you're not trying to look through the lectures or the lecture video or the textbook. You're not trying to scramble to find that information, which is going to take up valuable test time. Now, again, I would over prepare. You don't want to have that moment during the exam where you're like, oh, my God, I didn't study enough. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't find these terms and your anxiety starts to build. Uh, if you find that you over prepare for this test, you can always dial it back a little bit for exam two. But you don't want to have that moment where you're like, I should have done more, right? And you're in the middle of the test and it just causes more anxiety, um, which makes it hard to think clearly. So again, if it were me, I would write or type all of these terms out. I'd have it in front of me. That way, if I need to reference it, I know I have every term organized by chapter. Um, but make sure that you could answer questions related to anything on here. And again, remember the test is open notes and open book or any materials that you have completed, like if you've done this study guide, but if you haven't studied and prepared, you are gonna be very tight on time. So again, I would really recommend, if it were me, um, I would write or type all of these out, I'd have it in front of me, ready to go, and that way if I um, am feeling anxious or I forget or I just need to reference my notes, um, they are right there, ready to go for me. Um, as I said, mainly you're studying for multiple choice and true false, but there are some short answer questions on here. Never essays, they're more like, uh, what are the five Ds of abnormality, right? And you might list those five um, Ds for me. Uh, so they're often going to be like lists of things or maybe comparing two concepts in like a chart. Uh, I think you'll get really good at picking um, out what those are uh, as we go through the semester. So again, my biggest suggestion to you for the exam would be to study and prepare like you would for a normal in-person test Make sure that you're organized, that you have a quiet place. And then I have one more really, really big suggestion. And uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. It's totally up to you, but please don't wait till Sunday night to take the test. One, Sunday's the Super Bowl. I mean, you wanna have that day free, or at least I wanna have that day free. I don't plan to be doing any grading. I'm going to be doing lots of eating and uh, drinking sodas sodas, <laughs> drinking Pepsi and uh, eating nachos. That's my plan. Uh, I plan to be very busy on Sunday, right? You don't want to have to wait till Sunday night to take the test. Inevitably, this is like the law of the universe, right? When you wait till the last minute, your power will go out, your internet will go out, your computer will crash, you will get sick, there will be an emergency, there will be something that gets in the way of you being successful. That is like always the law of the universe. So please try and not wait till Sunday night to take the test. Take it this week, take it Friday, take it Saturday, take it Sunday morning. But if you wait till Sunday night to the very last minute and you run into a problem, you might not be able to get a hold of me in time for me to help you address it. So if you take it earlier in the week, you set yourself up for success and then you're free to watch the Super Bowl, right? And, and root for the Rams 
or the Bengals, uh, whoever it is that you are are going for, or or just eat and watch the commercials like my wife does, <laughs> so um, which is fun too, right? So just make sure you set yourself up for success. Again, the exam, no trick questions. If you study and prepare, you will do beautifully. Make sure you use the study guide. The study guide is your friend, and you will get a score right away other than the short answer questions, uh, which I do have to grade manually. So um, are there any, any questions at all, anything else about the exam that I didn't touch on that you are, um, that I could answer for you? Any questions or comments or thoughts about the exam? I still have a few other things to, to talk about, but um, anything related to the test? I'm gonna wait just a moment. And um, while I'm waiting uh, for you to see if you have any questions, a couple of reminders. If you could take a moment, a lot of you fell off this week. Um, a lot of you who subscribed for free with your Amazon Prime, uh, a lot of you lost that subscription. And I see some of you still have it if I scroll up through the chat. Uh, but make sure that you double check your subscription status. Make sure you put your first and last name in the chat um, if you haven't already. Or um, if you are subscribed, you don't need to worry about it. But if you could please um, take a moment to check that. Um, even, it, um, even when we're in person, I might still utilize Twitch in some ways. So if you could please make sure that you're maintaining that, uh, I would appreciate it. Thank you so much for those of you who are checking and doing that every week. Uh, I'm not seeing any questions about the exam. So a couple of reminders, right? Our class, and I'm going to put this here in the chat. Our class is Tuesday, Thursday, 8.30 to 9.45, right? So our class meets Tuesday, Thursday, 8.30 to 9.45, and we obviously have been doing this via Twitch. But as of next week, next week, one week from today, we will be meeting in person. That is the plan, that is the schedule, uh, that I haven't heard anything um, to the contrary of that, so that is our plan. And uh, I'm sure I am not alone when I say that, that makes me incredibly nervous and yet a little bit excited, right? I'm excited to see all of you and have the interaction that I so miss about um, about teaching, but I'm also a little bit terrified. And I know that a lot of you are as well because you've sent me messages about it. Um, and that's completely normal. If you are nervous, it's okay. I get it. And I am right there with you. We will get through it together. Um, this is going to be different and it's going to be strange and uncomfortable. And I imagine next week is going to cause a lot of anxiety for all of us. Uh, but on Tuesday morning at 830 in the morning, uh, we will be meeting in person next week. So our class meets in HSS 206, which is upstairs in the HSS building. Please try and get there Tuesday morning on time. Um, if you can be a little bit early, that's great. Remember, there are a couple of things that you need to do, right? Remember that you need to wear a mask, right? And I'm gonna put a bullet of this in the chat, but you do need to have your mask. You do need to complete um, app screening. Okay, so if you haven't been on campus yet um, in the last like couple of years, make sure that you download the MyVCCCD app and complete the screening. You also need to do the campus check-in. Okay, so a couple of things, right? So you wanna leave yourself plenty of time. It might take a few minutes for you um, to complete the, the screening on your phone, to get the ch uh, check-in at the campus and get the little bracelet showing that you've done that. If you don't have a mask, I will have to send you out. If you uh, haven't done the check-in, I have to send you out. So just please try and make sure that you're doing those things um, so that you have the easiest uh, time that you can. My plan for Tuesday, as we are going to keep it a little shorter than normal, uh, we are going to ease our way into this. I know a lot of you are anxious. So on Tuesday, what we will do is we will um, kind of go over the syllabus a little bit. Uh, and I know we did that at the beginning, but things are going to change a little now um, since we are going to be meeting in person. So I want to go over some like policies. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that kind of stuff. We'll go over some of the COVID um, procedures and things like that. Uh, maybe we'll all introduce ourselves. We'll get to know each other just a tiny bit. And then we will take a deep breath and be like, we did it. We made it through one day uh, and, and we'll end a little bit early. So it definitely won't be the full time on Tuesday. And I think that will be nice for most of us. But I do want to talk with all of you about how I plan to approach the semester. I am going to have a couple of like virtual days um, and things that I have um, planned out. So um, there will be some days where it's virtual just um, to make it safer and easier and less anxiety for all of you. 
Uh, but we will be meeting Tuesday morning. This is our last Twitch live stream for now. I, I mean, you know how it is. Things could change at any moment and we could be back online, you know, in a week. <laughs> or they could announce on Monday that we're not actually going back. But for now, uh, we are planning on meeting Tuesday morning, 8.30 in the morning in HSS 206. Now, of course, if you test positive for COVID, if you are feeling sick, or have any of the long list of symptoms, right, that there are, um, or if you fail the screening, any of those things, right, please do not come to class. So if you are sick on Tuesday with COVID or just sick and you don't know what it is, make sure that you email me. You have to email me. If you're going to miss class, make sure that you reach out to me and contact me. And of course, we will work together uh, to make sure that you have um, an ability to do things in a different way. But uh, is that clear to everyone? Are we all feeling, everybody feeling okay about it? I can't see you. I mean, I'll see you next week, but uh, how are you feeling about that? Is that Does that make sense? Make sure that you, uh, again, have a good mask. You have, do the app screening, campus check-in. There's hand sanitizer and extra masks in every room, I believe. But um, please try and plan ahead and have those things. Uh, bring everything with you. Be ready to go. And uh, we will have a, a short class on Tuesday kind of, talking about our plan for the semester, meeting each other, and going over a few um, key things. And um, again, if you're feeling anxious, that's okay. We will get through it together, right? Um, I definitely am I'm a little anxious about it as well. So um, other than that, um, I do have your extra credit question to give you um, for the week, but just a couple of uh, quick hits, quick reminders. Read chapter five in the textbook. Read and um, look through the slides, watch the lecture video and take notes. Don't forget to complete the mindfulness video um, that's on here. That's going to be really helpful for discussion number five that you also have this week. Uh, complete exam number one. This is due before Sunday night. Again, study, prepare, set yourself up for success in all of the ways we talked about. And then um, I will post a recording of this when we're done today. We'll take a couple hours, but it will be up for you. Um, let me give you the extra credit question. For, um, for this week. And this is something that I went over in the lecture and you can also find it um, in the textbook, of course. But your Twitch extra credit number five for this week, um, last uh, potentially the last Twitch extra credit opportunity here. Uh, what are the two systems that the hypothalamus activates during the stress response? Uh, this is very related to chapter five. What are the two systems that the hypothalamus activates in our stress response. And when you're ready to answer this, you'll head back over to Canvas. And since we're in week five, you'll click on Twitch extra credit number five right here. And then up at the top, like you have been doing, you'll click on start assignment. And this will bring up that text box where you can type your response. And then at the bottom hit submit. And then you get your uh, confetti burst and Oh, it's just confetti today, nothing else in there. Um, I'm always curious, what will it be? You know, confetti burst, this is due before Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. If you uh, do it early, I will be monitoring it. If you have any questions about this or the exam or anything for this week, uh, please feel free to put them in the chat now or you can email me later in the week. If you have um, questions or concerns about next week meeting in person, feel free to put that in the chat or you can email me but don't forget on Tuesday morning next week, rather than online, we will be in person. So um, you'll notice I have like weeks um, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how I want to organize this. I will likely leave up some version of either like the slides or the video, something like that um, as we go through. I'm also thinking of trying to record um, the lecture in some way during class, uh, maybe um, on Zoom or something like that for those of you who um, maybe are sick or out that day because you have COVID, that's gonna happen and I, I completely know that. Um, so we'll talk about all of that together in person next week. But for now, if you have any other questions, I will hang out for a few minutes to answer them. If not, have a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves, stay healthy or get healthy. Enjoy the Super Bowl on Sunday. Uh, and I will see all of you on Tuesday morning next week in the HSS building, unless something changes, which of course, if it does, uh, I will let you know. But um, that's, uh, that's everything that I wanted to share with you. Good luck on the exam. Good luck uh, with everything for this week. Uh, don't forget to put your name in the chat and check your status. 
otherwise, um, that is it. Have a wonderful week. I'm going to, um, I'm going to minimize my video, but I will hang out for a little while. Of course, like usual, if you do have any questions, uh, and if you think of it later, feel free, um, to, to email me. All right. Thank you. You as well. Have a wonderful week. And, uh, it's going to be hot this week. I don't know if you saw any of you saw the weather, but uh, it's going to be like in the eighties, which is a huge bummer. It's February. I keep waiting for the snow up in the mountains to take my kids and I'm waiting for the rain. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, um, maybe it's over, <laughs> but, uh, thank you all again. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to minimize this. Uh, and again, if you think of any questions, uh, feel free to add them in the chat. Thank you all as well. Have a fantastic day, a fantastic week. And uh, I will look forward to uh, seeing you all next week. You too. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day as well. And like I said, I will be here for a few minutes. If you think of any um, any questions, I'm happy to answer them for you. All right, everyone, it looks like everyone has, uh, looks like I'm the only one still in here unless I'm uh, missing something. But um, if you have any other questions, of course, feel free uh, to reach out to me. Otherwise, have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Good luck on the exam. And I will see you next Tuesday morning in HSS 206 at 830.